I guess my role as head of character animation is to really define the style of animation for the show and to make sure that what the animation department is delivering to the directors is what they want to see. And a big part of that for me is doing a lot of the animation myself and to try to set the bar so that everybody kind of knows what we're looking for. When I was a little baby, my mom said that I was always drawing with whatever was at hand, whether it was like crayons or pencils or whatever. Yeah, I drew like on the walls, on the tables, everywhere. The, the second job I had was actually at a commercial studio in Montreal, and it was a really small place, and we did a lot of different types of jobs. So not only would we lay the shots out and animate them, we'd actually take, the, take our drawings downstairs and we'd shoot them on a 16 millimeter Bolex. Then we'd take the film cans in and we'd develop them ourselves, and we'd like be shaking them around, you know, trying to dry off the film. So there was this huge disconnect between sitting at your desk and having this, like, you know, kind of visceral experience where you're actually animating and you're creating these images and you're, you know, looking at your spacing and figuring out how all these images are going to work together. And then you sort of go, okay, now I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to, you know, do this really repetitive task of putting these drawings down and taking a picture and putting them down and taking a picture. So um, it was definitely like, you know, you'd be into the shot and then you'd be out of the shot. When you're drawing, you have to do those drawings and, and you have to plan everything out in advance. One of the nice things about the CG uh, paradigm is you're already working with the real model in real time. So all you have to do is you can set a pose and you can just let it play with the audio and you can watch that. You can kind of sculpt your, your performance out of watching it play and you find beats that, that need to be there and you make them happen. I mean, the whole CG process is, is very interesting that, you know, it starts with drawing, right, with, with storyboards. And then from there, it kind of goes into the layout where they stage everything. They figure out what the background elements are, where the characters need to stand, and they do all this with very, very low-res sort of versions of the models. And then once they come to us in the animation department, we, uh, we, we make them walk and talk and breathe and, you know, do all that cool stuff. Might we ask your name, madam? Susan. No, 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 we mean, we mean like your monster name. Like what do people scream when they see you coming? You know, like, look out, here comes. Susan. Really? Susan. Ooh, I just scared myself. That is scary. Well, in the computer generated realm, the, like the more powerful the processor, the more information you can get into your workspace and into your different windows that you're working with. So um, if you have a really, really powerful computer, you can turn on your background, you can turn on all of the characters in the shot, you can um, bump the res up so you can actually see facial expressions and stuff like that. Whereas if you don't, if you have something that can't handle all that data, you end up stripping all that away. Like when two characters are talking, you don't have to just have one on and make that work and then turn the other one on and see how that kind of works. You can actually have them both in the shot interacting at the same time, which, you know, takes some, some power to make happen. To me, the, the future of CG features is still really wide open. You know, we've, we've only had about 15 years of making these things and releasing them to the public. And I feel like stylistically, you know, we've covered about this much ground. And there's so much more that we can explore.